<laughs> no one wants to do that. Hello, everybody out there in internet land. This is Belena's IoT Project Clinic. Um, so we had like a beta run last week, but then we published it live because it was great. And this week we're straight to the internet um, and we'll see how it goes. So this is Belena's attempt of having a, a clinic where you can come chat about your projects, uh, show us any progress, give us any demos, but uh, also ask any questions. And then the panel that you see before you will try our best to answer them. Not promising, but we'll try, or maybe the community will answer them. And one way or another, we'll all learn. It's all omni win-win here at Belena. So um, we'll uh, go around and have quick introductions. I thought last week we were pretty slow in our introductions, led by me. I think mine went on for like a minute. So let's do five second introductions and keep it snappy. I'm Phil, uh, I'm the shepherd of Belena Labs. Go Rafa. So I'm Rafa, I'm the newbie in Balena Labs. I'm trying to make a very good project, very useful. Kyle. I'm Kyle, I do OS stuff mostly, but I spend a lot of time tinkering. So I'm here to help out where I can. He's a right tinkerer. PJ. Yeah, I mostly break the back end and occasionally do something useful. And fix the back end. Alan. And fix the back end. Hey, I'm a hardware hacker here at uh, Belena, and I like to tinker too, just like Kyle. Two tinkers. Dan. You're going to have to make it three tinkers because I'm a tinker and I'm also a back end engineer here at Belena. Mr. Tomas, nice to join. Hi. I'm also a tinkerer. Sometimes I'm doing stuff, sometimes I'm not. <laughs> wow, that was insightful. <laughs> yeah. It's right in job in five words. <laughs> what, are, you, are you doing anything now? I am, I am. I'm talking <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> right. And fashionably late, Andrew, what do you do? Five seconds, go. Hey, what's up? I just sit here in front of my vacuum and work. Oh, that's my Dang, favorite vacuum cleaner vacuum in the world. Is that an IoT <laughs> yeah. vacuum? Is that Raspberry yeah. Control? It's just regular. Actually, Phil, unfortunately, that first one broke down. This is the new one. Oh, man. You just break yeah. it to me like that live on the internet. No, oh, no sorry. lead up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so when I first joined, I joined a meeting with Andrew and he had like a heart shaped balloon attached to his vacuum. So it's always stuck in my brain that he loves his vacuum a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Episode one of the Project Clinic. Who's got some project they want to chat about? I got some pretty exciting. Yes. I love how yes. you are, Dan. Straight in. I got, a, I got a few actually, but this one's actually ready this time. It's done. Uh, it's see. Exciting. Um, so little uh, preface on it. At Bellina, we have uh, a handful of our engineers on the uh, DevOps on-call rotation, which basically means if infrastructure goes down, someone's assigned at that given time to go fix it. Um, so um, part of this process is we have to be told about these infrastructure issues. So typically, you get an email, you'll get a text. If you have downloaded a, an app, you'll get a push notification. Uh, I found these all to be insufficient for the severity of uh, infrastructure failures because, you know, um, people text you. So that's like the same channel as just like general communication. It's not always something you want to look at right away. Um, you emails, even lower priority, push notifications, you know, and, you know, maybe you don't have your phone next to you, whatever. So I'm thinking, what's a solution? What happens in other industries when things go wrong? Well, alarms go off. You think of our back end siren kind of a, uh, a a warehouse and manufacturing facility for software. They got these big alarms with blinky lights and loud sounds. So I said, you know what? We're an IoT company, right? Why can't we do the same exact thing for our warehouse, our infrastructure, our you know manufacturing process of our product? So I made a very simple uh, uh, device that what it does is. Um, and we'll, I'll have a blog post soon on it, I hope, uh, at least a GitHub uh, that's public because I think it's pretty cool and I think it's something that maybe some of our other uh, on-call engineers might be interested in using. But basically, um, I bought one of these industrial light stacks that you put on like big machines um, and I hooked it up. Let's Alan's see, I'm feeling my light stack's bigger than yours. Because... <laughs> Alan's out, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to just maneuver my laptop because a lot of the parts are very <laughs> fragile. 
So we've got this, uh, my name's covering it. We got a Raspberry Pi Zero here. There we go. Um, this is connected to a, and I'm very careful in handling this guy. Um, this is connected to a simple AC relay. Um, this, this brown cable here is plugged directly into a socket, so that's why I'm being careful with it. Um, yeah, my family was looking at me like, what are you doing cutting power cables? I'm like, don't worry, I'm running Chris. three in this. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so it's very simple. Um, Raspberry Pi Zero connected to a relay. Uh, this is powered off 100 20 volts AC, so that's why I have a relay. They also make like 24 volt models if you want to use DC power, but I thought it'd be fun to try using mains power. Anyway, I think he's uh, outdone you, uh, Alan. Yeah, so a lot of these um, these incident management platforms, we use Victor Ops, um, but you know, there's PagerDuty, there's others that I probably don't know the names of, there's custom solutions. A lot of them have web hooks. So you can say when uh, an on call an, or an incident happens, uh, it'll send a web hook to something just like how you would get a text or whatever. Um, and in that information, it says, hey, who's on call at the time? What went down? Whatever. I only really care about what's on call because I don't want to get alarms about other people. But um, what's great about uh, specifically Bellina, like if, if it's just a simple relay, you know, why couldn't I use an Arduino whatever? What's great about Bellina is I can... Um, because you get that public device URL, I don't need a backend to manage the web hooks that the Arduino then says, hey, our, is an alarm going off? Like I can just tell the Bellina device directly, which is really cool. So I'll give you a little demo here. Um, got my little alarm here. Let's say uh, there's an incident happening and Victor Ops sends a web hook. Um, Dan, to... I can take it on production if you'd like to test it. I can just deploy yeah, everything. Let's just go right down, and we can. That's my job. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, no, no, I, why not? I've got, I've got a little in here, but basically, if we get a Victor Ops web hook uh, that says "I am on call" and it hits my device, um, what's going to happen if I go ahead and recreate that? Is this is going to happen? It's extremely loud. Um, it will wake wow. you up. Let me go ahead and acknowledge it there um so i also I, I bought this giant red like emergency stop button that i'm going to wire up to be the acknowledgement <laughs> um in fact i could go get it later it's in my basement right now but yeah this thing is super loud it's super bright um it's also good if you decide to go to bed while you're on call because it will wake you up um this gives you that flexibility to know hey you don't need your phone near you you can go to bed if you want to take a nap you let's say let's say you have like oh, the, it's the so subtle late night one yeah and you know not only will you know if you're um have to deal with an incident but your entire family will be able to help you out so because they will all now be quite aware that's nice. you know. um, well i've got a feeling there's going to be like pyrotechnics next week we're going to have fire yeah. flashes yeah, which I get on my adafruit order for the uh the grill um, it also reminds me of something. It reminds me of uh, the bat phone. That's what you need to 3D print some sort of bat phone, the red one that used to flash in like, the <laughs> 70s version. Hey, yeah. hey uh, Dan, I have a question for you. Yeah. So Phil kind of hinted at it. Uh, during the pilot episode zero, you were all about hacking on propane lines and whatnot. Now that you have an incident monitor for like software ones, are you going to make one for like you, Dan, the person? Like an mm. incident monitor for Dan. It's like when you're in trouble, you hit the button and we come running because clearly <laughs> yeah. you're on the path for something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad idea. I wonder if um, I wonder if Apple HomeKit has because uh, they do have web hooks. I wonder if I can integrate like the Apple Watch fall detection or something. Oh, there I found it. <laughs> so does <laughs> <Bam. The bat. laughs> yeah. um, your uh, does your yeah. node ping web hook allow you to filter by whether or not it's actually you that's on call, or are you going to get pinged with that? By yeah, regardless. Yeah, it filters uh, whether I'm on call or not. Uh, it's, okay. it's all very hard coded right now. I hope to make it a little more flexible. So if others wanted to make it, um, it's quite easy because it's a two dollar relay a twelve dollar industrial alarm and a ten dollar uh, raspberry pi like you know it's quite cheap to make and it's kind of nifty to have put it in your office you know that's that's your bat signal man <laughs> when the <laughs> goes down, that's your call to action and you get a seven dollar giant red button wham you smack that thing when you acknowledge it oh, satisfying perfect. uh it really is um can you make so, one for support acknowledgement i'm that here might go off a little often <laughs> I, I should make here. it so that it it doesn't stop 
until you actually solve the incident. So that's like yeah. oh, wow. <laughs> extra yeah, that's incentive. Like, I put yeah, some. Yeah. I put some. Fail you better get to work. In. Yeah, I was. I was trying to be clever with this. I put some fail safeties. It won't go on for longer than a minute, or if you acknowledge it, so whichever comes first. And I also made it a, like a state machine-based thing, so um, it's not like it could get stuck on. Like it, like uh, checks to see, hey, am I on? And was the last time I triggered it on? less than one minute ago if so flick it off and that's just a constant loop that's polling so i i tried to put a lot of like fail safes in it so you never get into a situation where this thing's just on and that's why i also like flick it on and off instead of just leave it on um to make it so it's it, like you never just get in a stuck state um but yeah i don't know i thought it was a it was it was pretty fun i made it in uh only took a few hours after i figured out the difference uh between my um 64-bit builder and my 32-bit device. Um, so that was a fun few hours of debugging. But yeah, it's, it's really quick. I mean, it's three cables. Um, you got to be a little bit comfortable with soldering to uh, you know, hook up um, to join the ground leads on your uh, relay and the uh, AC power adapter. Or it's not even an AC power adapter. It's just straight up AC power. Like there are cables coming out of the socket and into my device. <laughs> so it's a little. How little... does it? Um, how does it compare to yours, Alan? Because you're. I, I'm guessing, knowing Alan as I do, that you didn't plug yours into the main. And well, actually, this is the 240 volt version. You know, two sides of the 120. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, no. Okay. This is not. This is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that was Dan's next project is is doing a dual 120 right out of phase. Oh, there we go. Uh, this is a 12 volt, and I'm also using relays because you know once once you're above the capacity of uh, Raspberry Pi's GPI opens, you need a relay anyway, right? So yeah. I guess I could convert this to to 120, but um, but this particular one runs on um, 12 volt. But I was thinking maybe. Uh, I've always wanted to do an API for this. Maybe we should combine the two, Dan, because then we have a general API for driving one of these light sticks, and you know yeah, we could totally. have anything trigger them. So, so do you mean we are going to have a Balena block so that we can integrate it with Jellyfish? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. Nice. Sorry, somebody has a hold of the public URL. Oh. Pretty sure. Maybe we, <laughs> maybe we should turn that back off then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See what happens when you don't put fail safes in, like I uh, think sensible I know Dan, that we should now do. call him sensible Dan. Hey Dan, I did put a kill switch in here. I don't know if you can see this, but there's oh, a toggle no. switch to turn off the buzzer. You might want to consider that in case somebody's yeah. the, um, giving you a hard time. Yeah, the the, uh, the big acknowledge button that I have, it's one of those ones where you press it and it like locks down and you have to twist it for it to come back up. Oh, so whenever cool. it's down, it will never alarm. So even if you just like hit it and leave it down, it, the alarm will never come back on. You actually have to do the like twist to reset. Um, yeah, Mate, can, I, I could I suggest you bit, but... add one of those buttons to your propane bomb smart bomb thing that you're making? <laughs> yeah, from... that that <laughs> you get this idea. video banned by saying smart bomb. Every every <laughs> project done has smart grill. Uh, it's a smart grill that's powered by propane. Um, I think every project that Dan has needs a big panic button. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've I got agree. A few of them. Um, and we'll need a disclaimer if we keep this going like this, like yeah, at the yeah, start yeah. of the yeah. This is done by professionals. I'm a professional, yeah. guys. Um, <laughs> clearly, do not try this at home. Do not try this at home, even though that's where I'm at right now. Um, Christian, <laughs> try it in the you basement. should make him the you should make him the fire extinguisher bot from Iron Man. Remember the one that follows Tony Stark around and is ready to extinguish him. Oh, I what a segue! I might not have seen that. What? Uh, you last seen Iron Man? Would... Sorry. Sorry? <laughs> Let's get back to serious business. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Somebody's going to caress us towards actually getting something done. Christian, last week you were talking about your robot project, but then we didn't have time to go into it too much. Can we right. talk about that before we before we lose our time again? Okay, sure. Yeah. So uh, long story short, my role here is to integrate robotics tools with the Balena, with the stack. So... To, to have a platform to build on and understand the way the the soft our software with Rust would go together, build this robot platform. That's a bit dusty right now, but the idea is that uh, Ooh, it has a uh, lidar sensor. 
Uh, yeah. So it has a lighter sensor, uh, just like self-driving cars. Uh, it has a Jason uh, Jetson Nano on the back. Uh, this is not the default camera. I, I switched it to a real sense because I wanted to play with it because it has a larger field of view. Uh, sorry, underneath here, there's uh, some distance sensors. So automatically, uh, it uh, it should avoid obstacles. And yeah, it has a couple of holes and stuff for prototyping. So my goal here is to enable people with ideas to use this platform and and build their own ideas. Um, yeah, that's about it. It's around. Uh, you can find the details of how this was built and the whole process on on the forums on the Chantal category. Yeah. So um, share screen. And the kit is around uh, like three hundred euros. It. So it's. Does it have a name? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, that's a problem, and I want I want help with this. Like, please help me name this. I have a suggestion. Jonathan, um, Fr Fred. <laughs> Might work, uh, I guess. <laughs> so the um, the build log that I've got up at the moment is quite long, oh, yeah. but because there's so much good content and details here about things that you want to do with getting it to recognize objects with the camera, the how you've built it, um, the components you've used, but also like your inspiration for wanting to do this for making because it, it's basically going to become like a platform that other people can build on top of, isn't it? Where that maybe they've got a different use case to you and so they can add extra components on top and wire them in. Yeah, and also with the, the blog post, uh, the forum thing is a bit long because I detailed every mistake that I made. No, 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 I, I, did, I definitely really... didn't mean too long. I meant perfectly long. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, okay, sure. Yeah, we, you definitely want lots of details in a project like that because you know, it's, it's not only interesting to read through those things, but you learn so much from seeing the steps somebody else went through and the mistakes they made and the way that they thought about it and came up with the solution. I think you learn so much more than just a polished one pager about a robot I built and how oh, it's definitely. constructed. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's what's great about those show and tell build logs is you get everything warts and all. Yeah, we right. actually were in Inspired by the community because they're the ones who did the first ones, but they'd be sprinkled all over the forums, you know. So mm -hmm. there are ones about all kinds of projects. So was, at one point, we we're just like, hey, let's just put them all together. So it's pretty yeah, cool to see it's... both community members and teammates hop on and just detail their adventures from getting to start to maybe finished. Is it ever finished? There's, there's like drone projects, there's uh, smart mirrors, houseplant automatic waterers. Baby, baby monitors. monitors yeah you name it there's there's loads of stuff in there it's really good and it's it's sort of a growing area it to me that i could throw my gps tracker on the back of that thing and let it wander and see where it goes <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah there was a number of ideas wasn't there christian like um i forgot who somebody was saying that they wanted to um go and detect where the wi-fi signal dropped out right their house. that was that was my uh mm -hmm. and he won't like there's the robot all uh does mapping already so it just goes around the room follows the walls and builds a map of the apartment or the place it's in right and on top of that uh, you can add the software defined radio uh and map the signals uh the, create a heat map of the signals and overlay it to that map so then you would know for example you, you would know if you have any spy bugs in your home uh, <laughs> if you, you do uh a or question. like yeah yeah, exactly. Uh, or detect where to put your router uh, mm -hmm. to not get blocked by the walls. So that's lots of ideas. Or well, the other make... idea I really liked, I've got um, a robot Hoover that gets stuck from time to time. And you were saying your robot could just track the robot Hoover around the house and pre-warn it of there's toys in the way, <laughs> there's a sock. <laughs> like pre-warn yeah, it right. not to go on things. I love that idea. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's one of the layer of things that I, I want to get into, like fleets of robots. So like share knowledge uh, between robots. So the the one goes for the this robot, for example, would go forward, uh, know where the what the objects are because it runs object detection, map them out, and then give that information to to a robot that maybe doesn't have any sensors at all and just 
vacuums no longer. I love the idea of uh, I've got a fleet of robots in my house. There's like a scout robot that goes and maps the territory, and then all the other robots can just go and do their job. The vacuum can just vacuum without having to worry about well, socks and in, transformers. In a house, that wouldn't be very useful, but uh, Christian, in an stop industrial setting. Don't trample on my dreams. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, man. No judgment zone. <laughs> yeah. What I do with my robots, Christian. It's if you business. want, if you want to have a fleet of robots in your house, well, there's no. Thank you. I'm not stopping you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. He's just not going to help you. <laughs> yeah. He is helping me by hacking live, <laughs> hacking in the open. Super cool. What are the chances of us? It doesn't have to be today. What is the chances of us seeing it move and do stuff on one of these clinics? Uh yeah, next one maybe. Sure. Uh, if, I, if I knew, I would have prepared this, but. Well, now we know. It, it takes some. It takes some time to boot up, load the sure. image, uh, yeah, yeah. stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How hey, well, are you also catering to our our little three D printing uh, community at Bolena by also providing perhaps STL files for a chassis? Is sure. That there's uh, the chassis is uh, is laser cut, so uh, it's just two D and it's available on some github repository i'll which i'll link it <laughs> which because i'm not sure if i put it in the balena org or my personal because i was confused at the beginning uh but sorry, there's man. gonna be the the it's a uh, svg file so you can scale it uh and then take it to a fab lab or some shop that does laser cutting and i chose laser cutting just because it's cheaper and more available right on um cool this is we're talking about the platform um there's this thing uh the platform block that i'm trying to build and it's basically uh its goal is to abstract away anything sensors anything motors right so the end goal here would be let's say you have a use case you have a robot that follows you uh you would there's a stack right there's the drivetrain there's the whatever the controlling the motors and then there's the more intelligent side of it so the uh object detection and all that stuff so you'd be able to just change the container with a platform block and move the plat move the platform from uh a drone from a mobile robot to a drone without changing the upper layers of the of your solution uh and yeah at this point what it does it's just uh have the, all the drivers for this particular uh, software uh, hardware setup uh and detects if you have a joystick connected and the moment it boots up you can already drive it if you have a joystick connected to it and later on uh it will contain obstacle detection as well so yeah that's going to come out at some point that's basically the first project that this robot is used to develop so just for anybody who's watching and has not heard about us talking about blocks before, blocks are kind of pieces of apps that um, we build and upload as images so that people can drop them into their projects and it provides some functionality to your project that you otherwise don't want to have to implement. So it might be a browser um, so that that's, that's an executable that when we wrap in some code and make it work with Belena superpowers. So there's things like browser that you can just drop in any other Chromium instance running on your device um something for our fin and then there's blocks for things like making dashboards um connecting data sources and data sinks things like that so what christian's looking to build is a ros specific block that would um make ros stuff easier drop bits in and then your ros project you don't have to implement config and those sort of things super cool um I was meant to say that uh, we will take any questions that anybody has on projects from people in the, the panel or anybody that's watching along on YouTube, you can just comment your question in and we'll try and answer it live. Um, so if you've got anything, put it in the chat and we'll try and get around to it. I'll see them, watch them come in. Anybody else got a project they want to talk to or a question? Rafa. Yeah, I have a project to talk about. So Let's go. I want to detect my when my water pipe breaks. Mm -hmm. I mean the main water that comes from the street, and then mm -hmm. uh, I need a smart meter, and it's going to be in the garden, and the house is going to be empty because it's holidays. So I need it to be sending alerts uh, to GPRS, Wi-Fi. I don't know yet. So the idea is to 
or uses Mark meter with some with some data regarding the instant flow and the, and the monthly consumption, daily consumption and all that. I can read that through a Modbus protocol connected to a Fin or a Pi and then do some intelligence there. So I, I have been able to, yeah, I found one. I found a smart meter that is, looks very nice, but it has to come from China. I was just trying to find the photo of it so that I could put it up. Yeah, it's a, it's a very nice, it looks nice. Let's see how it works. So, so then that, that communicates via Modbus. Modbus, uh, yeah, through serial, serial RS-485. So I don't have any, any device now to test. So I'm testing with a simulator over Modbus over Ethernet. And I am right now doing some readings with a, with a random generator. And I already built the blocks. So I, all, I, I, I did a small container reading the, to read the, the Modbus only one register at the moment. And that's already been shown in Grafana. Nice. So, yeah, it's like a, a custom setup or? Oh, got it. Go ahead. Sorry, Andrew. So, oh, Rafa, are you, did you hack your own Grafana setup together or are you using the dashboard block? I got the Balenasense project and mm. uh, got the, what, I don't remember the name of the original container. So I added, I substituted the, that container with mine, and the rest was the the same ones. The influx, the bay, MQTT, the dashboard, and the connector, and then mine, cool. which is on yeah. The... So I can talk through that stack in a sec. But is this the um, the sensor that you found that you're waiting yeah, to arrive? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, they were very nice. They sent me the protocol with the uh, well. In fact, they have five different ways of communicating with the devices. With the with the meter, I'm using. I'm going to use the, the Modbus with mm -hmm. uh, yeah the standard Modbus, and uh, I chose this one because it has loads of parameters, and the manufacturer was very kind to share it with me, and they only shipped one or two units, which is not very usual in this market, because they are used to sell to big companies and a big number of uh, units. So yeah, it's uh, very exciting to to be working on that, and it was so simple to build the blocks and to have the application running. So since it runs uh, MQTT, could this be integrated into Home Assistant or Open Hub or stuff like that? I guess anything. Uh, I, what I'm doing is uh, I am. Uh, what am I doing? Yeah, I am reading and then sending MQTT to a, to a right, broker right. there. So it can I can send it to any other broker or have any other uh, slave or client to connect to this broker and read the whatever measure I get. Hmm. Right, my intention message. with this project is to have a, a local UI or a dashboard in the device so I can connect remotely and say, hey, look at this one. It's been like this. I don't need the cloud or I don't need anything else myself. Got it. Yeah. Do you know what method it uses to um, to measure the the water that meter? Is it does it have like a flywheel inside, or is it ultrasonic? It's ultrasonic. Okay. And uh, I have the the specs somewhere. It has a very I I I can't compare with with other meters, so I don't know if mm -hmm. it reads a lot of uh, a big flow or a small flow. I don't know how sensitive it is. Yeah. So do you uh, only gonna... have one device? Oh, go ahead. That's right. All right. I was going to circle was... back to the Belena Sense oh. thing. So uh, blocks actually was, Belena Sense was like one of the reasons that we noticed the pattern and made this concept of blocks because Belena Sense had a sensor at the bottom. It used Telegraph to move the data into an influx database. And then a Grafana dashboard would show you your temperature and humidity readings. And then that same kind of pattern was used in multiple projects where something was providing data and ultimately ended up in a Grafana dashboard. Um, so that's where the concept of blocks came for that we've made one that does the telegraph job of moving data 
from somewhere, so generally from MQTT into a database. And the dashboard will interrogate the database for itself and learn the schema and just present you with a dashboard for you to configure. You don't have to go and find your values and learn how the data looks in that database. You don't have to do anything with the database. It just appears on a dashboard for you, and then you can just customize it, make it look pretty. So what Rafa has been able to do is take that same stack, basically, and take away the temperature and humidity thing that was feeding data and feed in his water uh, data from his Modbus sensor when he gets it. Um, and then there we go. We've got a brand new project built out of blocks plus a bit of Modbus code that Raf is going to make. Yeah, yeah. It was easier to build the blocks and to get them running. It was that was easier than getting Modbus. I mean, getting myself to interpret the registers and see if they were little Indian, big Indian, and if they were one way or the other. That took me more than building the blocks and seeing my random data in the Grafana. That was so nice. Yeah. So right. now I want to play. Is, is there a notifications block I can use? Not yet, Rafa, but innovation. it sounds like so somebody's cool motivated possibly. to make one. <laughs> yeah. Hands up. Anyway. Uh, we did talk about it several times. There was a project that um, about some scales, making some smart scales, and it got handed around oh. different team members for a while. Um, one of the ideas there is that it would uh, weigh things in your house and it would alert you when they get low. So I think the use case was coffee, that somebody was desperate not to run out of coffee. So it would detect when you've used your last bit of coffee before you need to reorder and it would alert you or just sort of automatically reorder was the other idea. Um, so it's been talked about for various things. With Grafana, you can do alerting. So if you didn't want to make a block just for that, you could use the Grafana alerts. They're worth looking into. Um, but it would be it would be good to think about what a notification block might look like for sure. That's actually very interesting that you say that because I have another project that I've been working on that uses. Is that it on fire? And does it no, involve your neighbors needing it's to evacuate? An incredibly safe project. What? Um, yeah, I know, shocking. Um, it, it involves the same um, uh, concept of this scale. Um, involves it. it's not uh, primarily around it so my kind of idea um was um basically sorry i'm just trying to turn off the entire world's decided to text me right now so i'm going to turn off my notifications um is it your siren yeah <laughs> it is um, the light version yeah so um so i was thinking about uh back to my so i was a computer i did a computer engineering degree in college and one of the things we had in our labs were these giant um spinning racks of various parts so resistors capacitors every electronic component you can think of um, all the way from full-size raspberry pis down to like the smallest smd resistor you've ever seen um and the problem was the way we would find stuff because we had so many not only there were like hundreds of uh little drawers in each rack but there were multiple racks was there was this uh, google sheet that everyone could scan a QR code and take them to Google Sheet. They'd search a thing, they'd find our old sheets. A1 kind of thing, or like K13, whatever. Um, I said, you know what? That's terrible. That's that's a dinosaur way to do it. There's a better way to do it. So um, one project I've actually been working on, and I, I when I actually looked up to see if anyone else has done this, I only found one Hackaday project that was kind of similar. Um, but basically, I want to build a industrial parts bin, so, you know, for not necessarily electronic components, but maybe like screws, nuts, bolts, you know, whatever you put in little parts bins. Um, and I want to put LEDs in each of the caddies. And what I want to do is I want to make either a companion terminal that sits on the side or a, um, a, um, a mobile app or just a, a mobile view web app or whatever that uses full text search. And you register everything you put in each of those bins. So I would say, all right, a 20K resistor, I'd search like 20K. It would show me the most relevant search results. Did you want 20K ohm resistor? Yes, tap on it, show me some information about it. And it would um, it'd be a button that says illuminate, right? And you tap that and it would illuminate the drawer that it's in. So you don't even have Ooh. to look for codes, try to do some like joining Sick. thing with the lines look you don't have to label the fronts of things like you just say illuminate it lights up right and you just go okay cool take one out on my way but you know 
while we're there, let's let's not just make it kind of smart. Let's make it really smart, right? Um, and one when I was looking into a lot of these solutions, um, some industries have solved already. So, for example, um, people you know that assemble Raspberry Pis, um, they have reels of these electronic components, and um, when you have reels. A lot of them have codes on the ends of the reels and the, the reel mount uh, detects when you get towards the end of the reel and it'll either alert you or reorder another reel, say you need to put a new one on, whatever, it'll tell you. Um, so thinking back to this is why I thought it was relevant because you brought up the measuring. I wanna put um, weight sensors in the each of the drawers or the rails for the drawers at least that you can say, hook into the digikey api or write a home depot script or whatever you know whatever integrations whatever the digikey for hardware is uh, not electronic hardware um, and basically what you can do is you can set rules that you say okay when this drawer's weight gets to 20 percent of when i first filled it up you would fill it up and say i just filled this you know zero it effectively um when it gets to 20 percent weight just order a new bunch um, so that way, not only it does it take two seconds to find the thing you want, but you can always find the thing you want because you never run out. Um, mm. Mr. Chris, we have a new owner of Belena Scales yeah. project. You, you can found the later. chosen one. Woo! It took yeah. a year and two years, but we did it. Confetti. Yeah, that's a much bigger project. Um, new maintainer. Yeah. And I, was, I have I was, another idea for you there. Uh, uh, yeah. Add a rest my camera on. Uh, and then use edge impulse or something to read the color uh, on the resistors, for example, or the type of screws. And then when you put something in front of the camera, it just lights up the correct drawer so you don't have to think about where to put it. Or you can go and put a cell solenoid in the back and then it just pushes a bit the drawer than you. Yeah. <laughs> I sense a rivalry. Bro. So then you have like uh, input and output both automated. So, yeah, you know. that's a good idea. Yeah, and I was, yeah. Uh, it was interesting too, because one thing I was exploring was the practicality of this, just from like a w wood, sm small to medium sized warehouses that maybe don't have this insane um, real. Would they like actually be interested in this, or am I just building, you know, am I just building stuff to build stuff? And I looked at it, and a lot of these like dumb industrial bins, we'll call them, just, just drawers, um, they're like thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah. It's like I could definitely fit some electronics in there. You could build one and charge like the same. So I think actually from like a practicality standpoint of it turning into a product too, if someone wanted to carry well, it there. Like not it, to bring this back to Phil's favorite topic that like trailers and vacation campers, but a lot of contractors I know, but it, it's yeah. just naturally happening. A lot of contractors will actually have large trailers that have those dumb bins in there because they're not thinking about what you're thinking about. They're thinking about, Hey, I need to carry all my stuff to the job yeah. site. So I can imagine this would be amazing for folks like them where it's like, they can take one less uh, burden off their list. Right. It's like, Oh, I run out of two inch drywall screws. How do you know? Oh, cause I got a ping on my phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think just, yeah, it's, it's all something that can run totally on device because, you know, at this point, this is where we're like, yeah, okay, we need a Linux computer, not just like a microcontroller because we're not just running the controller for the lights and the weights, but now we're talking about hosting a, an API that has enough uh, memory to store like full text search data in memory because that's all stuff you got to map in memory. Otherwise, it's, you know, you're just basically full table scanning databases. So that needs, you know, hundreds of megabytes of memory for a lot of stuff depends on how much information um you could take pictures you can include like this is where these uh higher level devices become really powerful that's what i'm really excited for uh the ecosystem for the compute module four because i think this is a perfect um board mm -hmm. for this where you can kind of just click them in to be like yes that's a nice that. segue actually we had a we had a question come in i do want to make sure we get around to uh, Christopher was asking if the Belena fins were impacted by the chip shortage. And luckily, Captain Buckles is in the comments. He's on the Belena fin team here at Belena. Um, we, we have been impacted. There's been a few different components that have been impacted by the shortage, but the team have sort of proactively worked to make sure that there are alternatives or we find sources and kind of leveled out that impact and not passed it on to the customers. Where we've really struggled is the compute modules, the CM3 modules are in short supply. Um, I know some people on the team even have joined and had a fin carrier board and are still waiting for the CM3 to turn up. Um, that's due to the shortage. 
Um, and then Christopher was also asking, because I mentioned the thin block, I probably passed over it a bit quick for Buckle's liking, um, what it was, uh, so if I share my screen, there is on hub, let me share my screen. If you go to hub.balena.io, so there's uh, fleets in here. So these are um, fleets that you can join a device to and it will run the software. So for instance, Balena Sound, it will run it and you don't have to manage it yourself. It's all managed for you. Um, but also on the left-hand side, there's a blocks menu and you can find all of the blocks that we've got. So there's things like the connector and the dashboard that we spoke about earlier in browser. Um, and then somewhere down here, unless my eyes deceive me, it's currently called Finabler, but it is going through some work to rename it the fin block and to give it um, a, a snazzy documentation site that Buckles is working on. Um, and what that block does is, so if anybody doesn't know, our Belena fin board is a carrier board for the CM3, and it's also got a coprocessor on that carrier board. So it can do cool things like sleep the compute module and then wake it up at a predetermined time. So if you've got a low power scenario, you're running something in the field off grid on solar, um, or batteries, then uh, one of the things you can do is sleep the whole board and it will come back up, take a measurement, send the measurement off and then go back to sleep. So it's things like that. And the fin block makes that super easy. You can, it's just an API that you can just say when you want it to sleep uh, or for how long you want it to sleep. And then it will go off and come back and do its job. So uh, it'll also handle us like the firmware flashing for that coprocessor, which used to be a bit of a task to do, but now the fin block uh, makes it really super simple. So that's a good one to check out. If you've got a fin and you're doing anything with a coprocessor. Uh, I think that was all the community questions so far. Keep sending them in though. It's good that we can we can answer them. And you've got people like uh, Alex in the comments who can answer them directly for you. This is the, the power of the clinic, I reckon. So I have a question, Phil. Um, mm -hmm. You gave me an idea. How can I use the coprocessor with the smart meter? to save some energy. Yep, so you can you can use, have you got a fin? Yep. Cool, yeah, you could use your fin for your project for sure. Um, connect it up, so is it a serial connection into your sensor that you're getting? Yeah, so you could connect it via the serial into uh, your sensor. And then also you deploy the fin block in your project. So you just put it in the Docker Compose. And if you go to the fin block, you'll see there's a snippet that you can get and copy and paste it into your Docker Compose. Um, and then what that does is it exposes an API on the fin. So in your code that's pulling in the sensor values, you would um, pull in the sensor values and put them wherever you put them. So if they're if you're sending them to MQTT or something, are you that then goes into connector, do that and then call the API on the fin block to say, go to sleep for the next, whatever you think, five minutes, whatever your attitude mm. to risk about water leaks is. Um, mm. I can't remember the, Alex will know, and um, Buckles will know in the comments, I can't remember what the maximum amount you can sleep it for is. I mean, I think it's fairly huge, but I mean, you could detect water leak once an hour, or yeah. it depends if your use case is because there would be catastrophic effects to being a leak, then you may want to check it every two or three minutes. Or if it's just you don't want to pay for your water leak that's seeping uh, into your yeah, garden. Yeah, exactly. I don't want then, it to be running for two days. So yeah, yeah. Once an hour is enough. Once an hour would be perfect, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, it's years. So <laughs> if you only cared about water leaks once a year or several years, then <laughs> it's done. Uh, but yeah, we can, we can go through that sometime if you want I can show you how to deploy it once perhaps when you've got your project up and running perhaps what we'll do is move it to the fin and we'll deploy the fin block and hack on it live or something and show you how to do it yeah might be cool be for people cool um anybody else got a project they want to talk about or a question I have a about question for Rafa real quick um how much are those uh water pumps that are the sensors Depending on the size of the pipe, uh, mm -hmm. around $80, 100 dollars. Wow, each. Each. Yeah. It's a, I oh. mean, that's a legit investment, especially if you have a like additional dwelling units like on your property. If you're lucky, and you want to make sure you can monitor, you know, some stretch of pipe out to a remote location. Okay, yeah, so it's well, definitely not a cheap project, but a pretty good one for peace of it's mind. It's not cheap, but the, the return of investment is uh, quite high. 
if you have yeah. a, an isolated house and you have that risk, uh, it's not bad. It's I, not I've fixed the leaky I mean, pipe before. It's not fun. So 80 bucks, 80 USD yeah. is worth it. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. Does, does that need to be installed by a plumbing professional or does it just attach mm. onto an existing pipe or do you need to cut it into your water you pipe? You have the, the custom, the, how do you say, the standard uh, diameters so mm -hmm. that you just have to cut the pipe, put some, I don't uh, know, in English, the, the Teflon and do the... Yeah. Luckily, you'll know if it's leaking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember to close the, the valve first. Yeah. Uh, the Step yeah. one. Step zero. Good. Good idea. <laughs> Dig through. I'm pipe. actually super excited now because, Alan, not to give away any of your goodies, but I know you're working on a prototype project that has to do with preventative maintenance using edge impulse. Um, yes, yes, I am. And it'd be really cool at some point, you know, this is like back of napkin kind of stuff, but to, to have uh, preventative maintenance and the pipe reading too. Because uh, if you live in a region that's like, you know, the winters get a little intense, I can imagine whether you're, it's for your house or your management property or your industrial property, you probably want sure. that. Yeah, and I've I've been through that before. I already uh, added the water sensor to my home system. It's uh it's a uh, not as sophisticated as the one we've been talking about today. Mine just uses the flywheel to measure water, but um, we'll definitely talk. I love the sound of that. It sounded so Heath Robinson. So it like watches the little wheel that spins on your motor, <laughs> like, on your meter. <laughs> and like detects anomalies. That's such a Heath Robinson contraption. I can't believe it works. It it actually it, works really yeah. well because the wheel spins. Uh, it's the wheel that spins the fastest, so you get the most mm. resolution of of how much water goes through. It's yeah, it's, it's very amazing. old fashioned, but it it works. You, you owe us yeah. a video. I gotta see this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, those yeah. are the meters you can hack with a magnet. So you put oh, a magnet on them. Oh, don't ruin it, Rafa. I think you could, but the, the meter's mine too. I, I added the whole meter and the sensor into my um, like water main. I had a plumber do it. The plumber cost more than all the equipment that I bought. I've also <laughs> bought a motorized um, valve, so I can use Home Assistant to turn off the house water if I need to. One day we've got to do like a 15 minute segment on Alan's house because I've I've benefited from seeing the tech he's put into his house it's outrageous we should definitely do that one day we'll have like all the number the of things links. he can see that is on and off and leaking and not leaking and can remotely turn things on and off it's crazy I would want a proper walkthrough of your geothermal system I'm very curious about that I hope you find some way to to bring it to the clinic or just show it off in like a build blog or whatever. I think it's it's very it. yeah. 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 Well, I've, I've slightly lanified it because I, I do have that uh, um, preventative maintenance system that, that you referred to, Andrew, which I can demonstrate some other time, and that's using Belena. And then nice. I also added my own sensors to the geothermal system and feeding those into a Raspberry Pi running Belena. So I, I get a lot of strange looks when anyone comes to service <laughs> this equipment because <laughs> I have all my personal wires coming out of it. So. Oh, we need that Ron Swanson gif that says, I know more than you. Like he visits a home store. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Parks and Rec. Yeah. Sorry, Phil, another reference. But this oh, guy well, tries to help him and he's like, I know more than you. And he just walks away. <laughs> like you have other references. totally Alan in this situation. Yeah, yeah. Dan's like, I brought fire and mains voltage, and here's Alan, just the daddy of all projects, showing me what it's <laughs> about. <laughs> they balance hey, each Mr. other Panav. out, though. Like, Dan will create problems for Alan to solve, right? So it's kind of a nice, like, partnership. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pranav, I saw you joined. Is that because you want to talk coffee? Yeah, yeah. I would love to talk about it. So... <laughs> So you've got a project to do with okay? coffee brewing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. I, I am, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I have one. So there, there are a lot of uh, uh, electronic equipment that or rather espresso makers that have a lot of automation built into them uh, with uh, you can judge the, or you can get live graphs of the pressure, temperature, and what kind of brew the machine is uh, processing. Right? Companies like Descent have a really hi-fi espresso machine, but I haven't yet seen a machine built uh, that could do the same for a pour-over brew. 
uh, which is supposed to be the most uh, uh, flexible way to brew coffee, uh, so to say. So I'm thinking of uh, building something uh, for that some somewhere where the the aim is not to uh, just measure coffee. It's just it's something uh, that will help me build better coffee myself or whoever uses it. So uh, mainly a brew logger uh, sort that there's uh, for first you you could log everything the weight of the beans the the grind size all of those and then you could actually uh, measure and plot the graph the way the temperature change because as you pour water and as the brew the slurry gets exposed to air depending on your ambient the the rate at which the temperature drops and uh, the way the weight changes so at least uh, temperature uh, and uh, weight are two sensors that can definitely be put to good use uh, so you need you need planar scales <laughs> this is yes, this is amazing. Yes, yes. We've tried to get rid of that project for two years, and then two yeah. people come along that want it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a really useful project to have, and it has a wide range of applications. Um, sure, a high resolution Gold. scale. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the one that I so I worked on Belena scales for a while before I shifted it onto somebody else, and the the way I did it, I got um, just a cheap set of scales from Amazon and like took the load cell wires out and put them into um, um, uh, an amplifier and brought those in and, you know, turned it into a signal in the Pi and then detected. The thing I, I was here for ages with sugar cubes trying to calibrate the thing and try and get it really accurate, but it seems like it, either you can get it accurate at low weights or you can get it quite accurate at high weights, but like there wasn't a huge range where the accuracy, I could maintain the accuracy. So I could definitely see like um, in the weighing something and ordering a product when it goes below a certain threshold, that would be okay. Um, or for me, like with my propane tank in the motorhome, knowing when I need to get a new gas tank, that would be okay. But I think if you were gonna measure, like I, you sound so into your coffee, I'm guessing you want pretty accurate measurements here. Well, yeah. You can get yes. accurate measurements. Um, it, the, when the, so the load cells that you're referring to, they usually are good for, like, for example, um, the ones that you typically have for weights that you, uh, or scales that you stand on, you usually get three or four ones that I think are 50 kilograms each. Um, they have like a rate, a weight rating. Um, I think it's typically like a max weight rating. And um, their uh, precision is in a percentage of their max weight rating. So if you get ones that are good for really large weights, like relatively the ones you get in uh, human scales, they won't be that great for stuff like sugar cubes because they're, um, they're per the percentage of a 50 kilogram is way more than that same percentage on like a five kilogram rated yeah, yeah. Um, load cell. So they make they make load scales that are load cells that have uh, different ranges. Um, so you'll if you're doing something like the coffee, you'll want to look for ones that are in the, the single digit kilograms. Um, yeah, because that way your your tolerances are, you know, within grams. The, the project I was doing yeah. was, was so that people ah. could quickly and easily get the parts and build it themselves. So mm -hmm. it was like what you could get from Amazon and no soldering. That was another project requirement. Um, so it was like those quick connectors that we talked about last week. It was quick connectors, which was like a load cell amplifier into the pie on a little shim and then try and do something with it. But the, the like, I think the, the accuracy of the load cell that came in those cheap kitchen scales off of Amazon was just really poor. And I think you'd do much better to, to get a proper load cell and wire it in. Well, that. I, I wonder if you, because um, I'm actually looking at one right now that I have. They make uh, like scales for kitchens and stuff, electric scales. And I wonder if you could grab those load cells because those are accurate to like uh, hundredths of grams. Um, mm -hmm. So I wonder if, if th those could be reasonable to grab too because they're only like 10 something dollars on. And on wouldn't something. you know it, Belena, I've got an expert, subject matter expert yeah. here in coffee. coffee. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the so ones that you get from. Uh, okay, yeah, good companies that sell coffee scales. So, yeah, like Mika said, they are typically accurate up to uh, 100 micrograms. So, yeah, mm -hmm. 0 0.1 gram is more than, uh, in fact, one gram is good enough unless you have like operating a shop where one gram per customer can turn into a lot of uh, dollars at the end of year. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that's fine. 
Is Micah going to join your endeavor, or is he going to create a competitor? I need to know. Mm. Uh, uh, Micah is more into espresso, I believe. Uh, uh, of course, he Oh, not pour overs. You know, I see. Well, different crews. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, he, he is into pour overs, but I think he's these days, the last I talked to him, he's more into uh, espressos and manual brewing using the flare. So he's got a new flare and uh, he's trying. So, yeah. Wow. Lots of stuff to be done there as well. So what's going to happen when you finally start your build log on the show and tell section? Is it going to be a build log or is it going to be like a coffee debate? I'm kind of curious. I can go either way at this point. Knowing the coffee community, like people go hardcore. Well, I think step one is get Pranav to make a build log so that we can right. see where it goes. Like I keep yeah, yeah. urging him to just let's, let's get going. Yes, yes, I, I, I plan to start. So I think to start simple, it will be just a weight and temperature. And then uh, eventually it would be uh, good to add some other uh, other aspects as well. So ultimately, it, coffee being a subjective matter, the, the best I could do is probably uh, like a photo of the refractometer, uh, which, which will indicate how much, uh, how well the coffee is extracted and use some image processing to get a reading out of that and log that too. So something of that sort. So right every from time, what means. Every time you tell me about this project, I always think about that Walter White coffee thing in Breaking Bad, <laughs> like that huge <laughs> chemical setup. I always think about that setup. That was with wires and sensors, basically. Yeah, yeah, an IoT version of that. Yeah, yeah, I've, uh, I have not seen that. It's a long time pending, but anyway, uh, probably a bad thing to admit publicly, but. <laughs> yeah i look forward i um, i think you should definitely start a build log and like now uh and then talk about the the, the kit that you're going to buy the way you're going to approach the project there's there's no reason not to start your build log and do your thinking in the open as well as your building of the project in the open um you might find that because coffee is such a trendy thing that people all want to build along and hack with you on your project so it'd be cool to do that do you yes, like the motivation to nice too oh oops. i do i don't use pour over i use the french press oh i have one of one of these per day yeah I, I, oh you're a man of volume it. yeah the whole Brand pot disgusted now <laughs> <laughs> yeah kyle the yeah. whole no, pot no. really wow oh yeah i find it too strong Depends how you brew it, I suppose, but it, that's the perfect amount for me in the morning. Um, we have uh, an espresso machine as well, but I save that for weekends and special mm. occasions because it needs to treat yeah. yourself. Hey, Phil. Have you... Yes, mate. I got a question for you. You're talking about build logs, and I wanted to just remind the viewers, it's not just the Blend employees, right? Everyone's invited, community members. That mean, mm. we learned from them in the first place, so we love to see them. But it led to a question for you, Phil. Uh, when do we want to open the doors to start inviting folks uh, outside of Milena into the clinic? In, into this clinic. I think yeah. uh, as soon as possible, it's kind of more like how do we do it? How do we have somebody during this hour who has a question that would like to come on the show and ask it directly and we get them a link and they join and how do, so it's more like the process that we try and work this out. Like none of us are talk show hosts or radio hosts are like we've got to figure all this out yeah. if anybody in the community knows how to do all that maybe you have your own youtube stream and you invite people in for questions what we want is like those uh you know old radio shows where people would call in with questions about their broken car and people would talk about how to fix it live um for, uh, long time car listener talk. first time caller car call that. Talk. Call, yeah i did look at car talk i looked up an episode to see what it was all about and <laughs> got the yeah. It was quite funny. Um, yep. Yeah, so that's what we want to. <laughs> yeah, that's what we want to try and achieve. But we don't necessarily know the best way to do it. So if anybody out there has had this sort of show and can give us advice, um, we want to build this in the open, like we build everything in the open. So this show is yeah. another example of us building it with you. Uh, do let us know anything, any suggestions whether we do it. So we're using Streamyard for this. Um, so at the moment, we can just do YouTube text questions chat questions but it'd be great if some people would want to join and we could let them in and uh, ask the question to the panel that'd be really great oh that's Rob, for you Rafa. it's on a call <laughs> it's his turn for support <laughs> cool uh right i think we're wrapping up there 
thank you everybody thank you panel thank you for people in the questions i feel like we helped a few people today so that's a good start good episode one team yeah better see you here next week micah i need to know your rebuttal on coffee wars <laughs> Yeah, catch you later, everybody. Yeah, see you around, guys. Yeah.